I don't get it. What? That. It's the Bradley. Well, if that's the Bradley, then what's this? <laughs> what's the date? <laughs> 1968. The question is, how did they get to that? From this. Gentlemen, our mission was to design and implement an infantry transport vehicle that would be a worthy replacement for the M113 armored personnel carrier. We have met that objective and then some. The Bradley armored personnel carrier will bring troops to a combat zone swiftly, efficiently, and safely. It will hold 11 men plus a driver and features a 20 millimeter cannon which will provide ample firepower and at the same time flexibility. Lightly armored, speedy, and solidly engineered, our troops will be arriving at the battlefield in the very finest American technology has to offer. And at a million and a half per, a real bargain. Nice work, Colonel. Outstanding. Damn impressive. In other words, it was designed to be a big taxi cab, drive guys to the battlefield and go back home. Mm -hmm. But how did it end up with a turret on top? Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is all well and good, Colonel Smith, but something wrong, General? Well, with this gorilla in production, I don't suppose there's going to be anything left in the budget for my scout. Doubt it, Bob. You don't need scouts. You have radar, air recon, satellites. You always need a scout. And you know what I'm thinking? Why couldn't this thing serve as a scout? But it's a, it's a troop carrier, General. But this is a speedy vehicle. Why can't it be both? Well, for one thing, it's too big. And for the other, you can't really see out all that much from inside. Sounds like a design flaw to me. Design flaw? Uh, no. No, we, we, we'll just stick a turret on top with lots of opticals. But then, sir, it, it'll be even bigger. Well, what's your problem, Smith? Not elegant enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, the thing is, General, it's kind of hard to do a sneak and peek when you're over 10 feet tall. He's got a point, Bob. Well, all I know is we need a scout. This is fast enough to do the job, and it's funded. Well, um, actually, we're a hair over budget. You turn the Bradley into a scout. We're going to be selling them off to some El Presidente de Chimichunga in no time. Anything for surveillance ends up south of the border before the paint even dries. When you needed that anti-aircraft gun, who backed you up on that? You did, Bob. And who testified to appropriations on behalf of that gun? You did, Bob. I'm talking to appropriations next week. Now, do I sell you on my scout or do I not? You did, Bob. And how about some portholes along the side for individual firearms so the fellows can stick out their guns and shoot people? Good. And you know what, Colonel? We already have the turret. We ought to get the biggest bang we can up there. I'm sorry, bang, sir? You can't hurt anybody with that pansy-ass gun. Add on some firepower. Where am I supposed to fit the extra ammo? I don't know. Can't you just shift things around? Make some room. You already got 4,400 rounds of machine gun ammo. Now you want to add 25 millimeter shells. General wants his ammo. He can't have his ammo. Not unless he runs alongside this thing carrying it. Well, can't you just squeeze it in? No. Oh, come on, just squeeze it in. We're not trying on Levi's here, Colonel. Are you telling me that in a vehicle this size, you can't find room for a few rounds of ammunition? Not in its current configuration, no, sir. So the configuration's wrong. There must be something you can dump. Dump, sir? Something you don't need. General, the interior is very spare. Besides the ammunition and, and the men... Maybe you can leave one of the fellows behind. Put the ammo where the men go. Sir. It is a troop carrier. So? Make a couple extra trips. What's the difference? They want a transport that doesn't carry men and a scout that's got a cannon as big as a tank's on it. And portholes. Oh, great, portholes. So the guys can shoot out whatever they can't hit with their cannon. You don't have to buy the damn thing, Jones. Just draw it.
That's one hell of a cannon. That's a problem. Why? You go out in a battlefield with this pecker sticking out of your turret, and the enemy's gonna unload on you with all they got. Might as well paint a big red bullseye on the side. But it's a troop carrier, not a tank. Do you want me to put a sign on it in 50 languages? I'm a troop carrier, not a tank. Please don't shoot at me. This was gonna be so beautiful. That's good work, Smith. Looks perfect to me. Thank you, sir. Thing is... Yes, General? Looks a little like a tank with that cannon on top. Uh, probably gonna draw more fire. Actually, sir, that has come to our attention. We know it's not a tank, but will the other side? I guess we could always stick in the armor, tough enough to hide a bit. Colonel Smith, could you explain why you put those portals there? Uh, yes, sir. As per your request, so the men could shoot out um, at the enemy. You're joking, aren't you? Besides, Portholes? What are we in now, the Navy? <laughs> <laughs> Say, you think you could make this thing amphibious? You know, get the troops across a river? No. Uh, no, sir. No. No, 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 no. Amphibious? The Bradley's supposed to swim? In theory, at least. Amphibious troop carrier slash scout. Slash tank. Couple more months, I bet they can get this thing to fly. What's this in the margin? Please help me. I am losing my mind. RLS. Lieutenant Colonel Robert Laurel Smith, head of oversight and development. Aluminum. This thing's got an aluminum skin. Huh? Anything an enemy tank fires at is gonna go through it like a hot knife through butter. We're doing the specs on using steel rather than aluminum. Of course, steel is much heavier than aluminum, so it won't go as fast. No, we can't lose speed. We lose speed, it won't work as a scout vehicle. It won't keep pace with the M1 tanks either. Thicker armor's a reactive measure. Let's think proactive here. I say equip the thing with anti-tank missiles. Then it can blast those enemy tanks before they get a chance to fire. What do you think, Colonel? Fine! Anti-tank missiles? I don't know. Where do I put them? The men will have to wear the missiles as hats. I don't know, Jones. That's why you get paid the big bucks. Colonel, there's no room. We're not talking about... About a pair of Levi's, I know, I know! God damn it! What we are talking about is 11 years with nothing to show for it. Except that also the size of the District of Columbia and a career that's on permanent hold. You see this? I've been a, I've been a bird colonel so long, I swear I'm growing feathers. Now, if you have to design hats to hold those goddamn missiles, then just do it. Gentlemen, if I can have your attention, please. If you'd all just take your seats. Thank you. We are pleased to present a scale model of the new Bradley fighting vehicle. supposed to carry 11 Bradley is outfitted 
with the most sophisticated surveillance equipment ever developed. It is also equipped with a rapid-fire cannon and an anti-tank rocket launcher. Which means it's loaded with 1,500 shells and 10 tow anti-tank missiles. So in summation, gentlemen, what you have before you is a troop transport that can't carry troops, a reconnaissance vehicle that's too conspicuous to do reconnaissance, and a quasi-tank that has less armor than a snowblower, but has enough ammo to take out half of DC. Fantastic. Congratulations, General Smith. General? Hell of a job. General. Let's build it. They're building it? This is what we're building? Mm.